What's up? Finally have a performance review of the LeBron 20s, specifically from the volleyball perspective. So this specific pair right here is a Time Machine colorway. It is the first pair that dropped and I was lucky enough to get a pair on sneakers in a 9.5. I think right now these are kind of hard to get in this colorway, but in general, the LeBron 20 isn't too hard to get if you're willing to spend $200. Yes, I agree. $200 is a lot to drop on a volleyball shoe, but you do get a very solid all around performer and some premium hits as well as some updated technology, but I'm not sure if it justifies $200, so we'll dive into it. Actually, before we do that, I wanna talk about some of the differences that I look for in a volleyball shoe versus a basketball shoe. And yes, LeBron is a basketball player, not a volleyball player. These are designed for basketball. First of all, I'm looking for a solid fit. Second of all, traction. So those two, if you don't have either, I feel like it's already a dud. And then number three is cushioning. And from a volleyball slash basketball perspective, if you're playing front row in volleyball, you are jumping a lot. Um, so if you're playing middle, outside hitter, right side, setter, any of those positions, you're jumping a lot to block as well as to hit or maybe your jump setting. So the number of jumps per match or set compared to maybe if you're like a guard playing basketball, you're jumping a lot more in volleyball in my opinion. That being said, after fit and traction are covered, the next biggest thing I'm looking for is impact protection and bounciness in the forefoot because you're jumping a lot and you're taking off from your forefoot and you're landing on your forefoot a lot. All right, now that that's covered, let's start with the fit. This is probably my favorite part of the shoe. I think the fit is phenomenal. It is very snug. Uh, my foot does not move around in the shoe at all. This upper is a mesh material. It is on the thicker side, not too breathable, but it doesn't require any breaking time as far as the upper goes. And in the heel area, there is a Nike Sphere technology, which is pretty much a really padded area around your Achilles and ankle. And this feels great when you put it on. So no complaints about fit at all, um, feels great. My toe is not jamming up against the front of the foot and yeah, no heel slippage issues or anything like that. Once you're locked in, you don't really have to retie too much. So I am very pleased and very happy with the fit of the LeBron 20. So if you have a normal foot, I would say go true to size. Otherwise, if you're a wide footer, consider going up half a size. All right, moving on to the traction. So on this particular Time Machine colorway, this has a translucent outsole and it does have kind of a storytelling uh, traction pattern on the bottom, but the traction is great. Um, I had no issues gripping the floor. So you do occasionally need to wipe your shoes every now and then um, because these grooves are fairly thin, but after a couple wipes, you're good to go again. I would probably avoid taking these shoes outdoors considering it's $200 and the grooves in the traction pattern are actually pretty thin and the rubber compound is actually on the softer side. So if you take these outdoors, they probably won't last that long at all. But again, traction, great. So um, those most two important features, fit, traction, they are awesome on the LeBron 20s. All right, moving on to the cushioning. So as far as the midsole, we have full length cushion. Um, in the heel, we have a zoom bag, a big zoom bag in the heel. And in the forefoot, we have a zoom turbo unit. Um, and then in the middle, there is a carbon fiber midfoot shank plate. Overall, I would describe the cushioning as more on the firmer side. I thought it would be a little bit more plush. It is more plush in the heel. And as you move your way to the front of the shoe, I think it stays relatively firm. Um, and a lot of that is probably has to do with the midfoot carbon fiber shank plate here, which provides a lot of the firmness and then this four foot zoom bag is a zoom turbo unit. So it's more articulated and not just one big zoom bag. And so it's not bouncy. Um, there, it does provide ample impact protection. So when you're taking off or when you're landing from jumping, you do feel it, but it's not as bouncy as I thought it would be initially. So there is a lot of heel compression with the cushion and the zoom bag in the heel. So if you like more cushion plushness in the heel, you'll probably like these. But if you're looking for something more bouncier on the forefoot, I don't think the LeBron 20s are that shoe, but the cushioning overall is still great. Just probably not my favorite setup. So if you're a player who has a very heavy heel strike when you're taking your approach to hit, then the LeBron 20s would be great for you. 
um, but it does suffer a little bit on the cushioning in the forefoot because like I said, um, it's, it's a zoom turbo unit. You don't really feel as bouncy when you're taking off and when you're landing. So less impact protection than I would have liked, but it's still there. I wish that they just use the same zoom unit they have in the heel and put that in the forefoot. And I think that would make the shoe a lot better, but that's my personal preference. It really depends on what you're looking for in the shoe. Overall, the cushioning for the shoe is still great. I just wish there was a bouncier zoom unit in the forefoot, but maybe in his next model. All right, moving on to the support of the shoe. So the support and containment lockdown is A1. Um, the fit, of course, drives a lot of that, and I really like the fit, snug, one-to-one. -one. Um, there are also some other features that help with the support. So looking at a top-down view, there is a outrigger on the lateral side of the forefoot here, which helps provide some more stability, especially if you're moving side to side, maybe on defense or you're shuffling to block or pushing off to swing block, then this outrigger actually helps a lot to provide more stability in the forefoot area. There's also a heel cup on the back of the shoe, which helps keep your heel and foot contained in the shoe. And also there is some extra lateral support on the midsole. There's a wall that comes up above the uh, upper, which helps provide a little bit more lateral support when you're pushing off that way. All right, overall, the LeBron 20 is a great performer for volleyball across all positions. I mean, LeBron is a huge dude, 6'8", 200, I don't know, 50 pounds, and he's able to rock these. So this is the first LeBron model that I've ever played in, and I am very pleased with the results. Um, now that he's gone more streamlined, a lot lighter, um, sleek, low cut option, I think this will be more attractive to more people. And that's probably a lot to do with his kids and their preferences and the younger generations in general. And if you check out Kick Stats, which is a website which tracks a lot of data about shoes players are wearing, in the NBA this season, the LeBron 20 is actually third on that list as far as total minutes played behind number one, which is the PG6, and number two, which is the Kobe 6, which none of us can get a pair of. But this is pretty popular as far as how many players are actually playing in them in the NBA and actually getting some run in the game. So I think that's a good sign. I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but another pro of this shoe is you can actually buy it. Um, if you go on Nike right now, the debut colorway has, I think, almost a full size run of the LeBron 20s. And a lot of other shoes just don't have that. So, all right, I think that's gonna do it. Hopefully this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Like if you haven't already, subscribe if you want more sneaker related content. If you wanna check out the performance review I did on the Air Jordan 36, you can check that in this video over here. And if you want to improve the shoes that you already have, then check out this video here on performance insoles by Move. All right, that's gonna do it. See ya.